Now, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another Swiss Soldier 1 video. In today's video, it is finally time to return back to Chicago. Yeah, and uh, today we are going to visit its infamous Chicago Makes Field. And yes, as you can see right here, Chicago Makes Field was a single runway airport in Chicago. And uh, when I say in Chicago, I mean in Chicago. This is literally in Chicago. You might not realize it, but it really is. Yeah, this is an airport that's in the middle of the city surrounded by water. And yes, this airport it was built in December 1948 quite a long time ago on the northerly island that you can see right here. That's what it's called. Uh, this is an artificial peninsula on the Lake Michigan actually that we have here. Actually, this might have been one of the first artificial island airports to be a thing, but yeah. On the left here, we have this harbor, which no one really cares about. Let's actually talk about the planes itself as well. And this airport it was for a long time used for especially general aviation traffic. As you can see right here, we have several Cessnas standing on the ramp. You know, this is a Cessna 152 as well, uh, some helicopters, but also a King Air and some private jets as well. So those you can also find here at this place. But let's actually go ahead and do some flying. Uh, let's not use a Cessna though. <laughs> I do want to try something bigger. You know what? We just mentioned the King Air, so let's go for a King Air. I don't know. I kind of feel like flying that one. Let's say I land that plane here on the runway, which by the way, isn't necessarily long. Long. This is only a 1,100 meter long runway, which is, by the way, pretty much nothing. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're not going to be able to fly big airliners at this place, definitely. Or is that so? We're going to find out soon enough. Now, obviously, the approach into this airport itself is uh, very, very interesting. You know, especially here flying through the middle of the city. That would have been really interesting. But, you know, you cannot experience that in real life anymore, right? But and luckily, we have the flight simulators, so we can do all that stuff still, right? Now, we're looking good here on the approach. Actually, there were a few airlines serving this airport, but they were using small planes, just like this one, actually, like the King Air. You know, small turboprop airliners, they don't really struggle with short runways like this. Using a jet here would have probably not been a very, very safe operation, right? But let's do that anyway later on. First of all, let's go ahead and land. <laughs> And that was a pretty acceptable landing as well. We can stop very easily here in this King Air, obviously. No problem at all. That was obviously pretty successful. And yes, there were actually like a few airlines flying here for quite a long time. And these were all like small airlines like Air Illinois, Brit Airways, or Great Lakes Airlines. They were all connecting this airport with uh, some nearby places around Lake Michigan or the state of Illinois, which Chicago was, by the way, in, obviously. You know, just some very, very regional traffic. These were usually small planes, just like the King Air here, that could serve very short distances. So no problem at all, right? Let's talk about the biggest plane that has ever flown here. And that was Air Illinois that flew the Hawker Siddeley here in the late 70s. That one is a 44-seat turboprop aircraft. We don't have the Siddeley here in the flight simulator, unfortunately, but we do have the Saab 340. Of course, yeah, we gotta use that one. That one is actually a pretty good equivalent to the Siddeley because it also has around like 44 seats around that corner. And yeah, this is a pretty good modern equivalent to that plane. It should definitely be able to land here though. I mean, we have operated the SAP 340 at much, much more dangerous places. Now, yes, that was the biggest plane to ever have scheduled service here, but there was a plane that was way bigger, but has landed at the airport as well for a special event. Let's check that out later. Meanwhile, we're in the SAP 340. Welcome on board. And again, this is quite a reason reasonably sized regional airliner that would probably be perfect for small airports like this. As you can see, this does fit quite a few passengers, at least. Meanwhile, let's get down onto the runway. Let's cheat a little bit here with time. And, you know, because this plane is a turboprop, stopping will not be an issue at all. Okay, what just happened? That was not that was not a good landing, was it? Okay. I mean, let's just pretend this uh, landing was a little bit more successful. Oh, wow. Okay, I now see what's what's up. All right. That was a bit of a too hard landing. I wasn't expecting that. But let's just imagine that even Flybe, which is a very dead airline now, could fly here as well if they were still alive, right? But yeah. Okay, let's actually go quite a bit bigger. I'm pretty sure that you were able to see some private jets here. I mean, this airport is obviously pretty appealing 
appealing to private jet people. Is that the right expression to people that fly private jets? I mean, you know, it is very, very close to the city because it is pretty much in the city. So obviously this would be a very accessible airport from the city. Like you could probably walk to your flight at that point, but okay, people that fly private jet don't really have to walk, right? Let's go ahead and land. This is by the way, a Challenger 300. I know that's not really that much of an accurate representation for the US of A because they mostly use Gulf streams here, but you know, whatever. Let's just land this private jet down here anyway. I keep forgetting how quiet this plane actually is in the cabin. It's very, very relaxed. Okay, this is a very much failed landing, but even that has to be accepted, but even that has to be tolerated for safe operation. But you know, this is again, a pretty not medium sized private jet. No problem about that. There we go. We have landed without any issues. So yeah, definitely executive traffic would not be any issue here. But all right, let's uh, move on to maybe a bigger plane. How about something like the 737? That's a classic. Maybe as we're talking about a retro, you know, airport that is not a thing anymore, we can use a plane that is kind of retro and not a thing anymore. Perhaps a 737. Let's go for the twin jet, the classic. Which kind of airlines do we have? Let's go for United. Let's see if back in the 90s, United could have flown here with their uh, 732s. All right, welcome on board the uh, pretty old 732. Actually, there are some 737-200s flying around these days. We recently talked about that. There's, uh, there's a 737-200 that's like 48 years old and still flies around in South America. That was a pretty interesting one. But first of all, let's go ahead and land this plane down here. Shouldn't be that much of an issue. I mean, 1,100 meters of runway is definitely not a lot, but it's going to be enough for something like a 737 at least. Maybe not officially, but you could do this. All right, we're looking good here on the landing. Next time, let's approach from the other side, from the city side here. Totally a good idea, huh? Oh, that was not a very smooth landing, was it? That was, in fact, really bad. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I got this uh, joystick here that doesn't work properly, but, you know, even a landing like this must be tolerated, right? Yeah. Which, uh, actually, this worked out quite well. <laughs> not too bad, honestly. And yes, this landing, it worked out perfectly fine, but the thing is, there's even a bigger plane that has landed at this airport before. And that is another retro plane, obviously, since, you know, this airport hasn't been a thing for, like, 20 years now. Actually, that is a 727. Yes, indeed, a 7. 727-100 landed here. I think that one is quite a bit bigger than the 737-200, right? Yeah, that happened in 1992. United Airlines donated an old 727 to the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry, and that one made its final landing at Meigs, and then was transported uh, to the museum, obviously. So, yeah, I'm not sure about this, honestly. The jet was only lightly loaded, which is probably why it was able to stop on a 3,900 feet feet long runway, right? Let's see if we can recreate that. I mean, this is, again, not a super small plane, but you know, there's only one way to find out if this was a good idea. Let's maybe not completely eat shit on this landing this time around. Let's hope to stop as quickly as possible, which we actually have. That was uh, fine enough. We actually used a lot less of a runway than the 737-200, which is just crazy. That was actually pretty good, huh? Yeah, but that landing again sucked, just like in the 737-200. Why did the spoilers come out so early? That's so weird. But oh damn, look how much of the runway I tried using. Jesus Christ, that was an immediate touchdown, which resulted in that big bounce that we had here on the landing, but it was fine enough. And that was a quick stop as well, yeah. The 727, it really doesn't seem too bad of the stopper, does it? Uh, but let's move on. I don't know. We can actually start moving up by quite a little bit. Let's go for a 767. A plane that was also around when that airport was still around, right? All right. Talking about um, this airport's state, I guess it obviously isn't around anymore. In 2003, it was closed. And actually, it was quite a long story. Yeah, the former mayor of Chicago, Richard M. DeLay, who, by the way, is only a few years older than this airport, had been wanting to close this airport for a while. He started in 1994, and it was a pretty long fight. And in 2003, he quite illegally ordered the city crews to make the runway unusable by bulldozing large X-shaped gouges into the runway surface in the middle of the night. Because he was really not feeling this airport, I guess. I mean, he, he did that, but, you know, that was quite an illegal thing to do. Because he didn't, you know, give the FAA any demolition notice or anything. And... 
Also, something that's even worse is that uh, obviously at that time when they demolished this airport in the middle of the night, there were still a lot of aircraft owners that had their planes casually parked at the airport, like in a hangar or something. So there were genuinely 16 planes stranded at the airport. And there was actually an inbound flight that was going on as well into Chicago makes while it was being demolished, which is uh, very interesting. All the stranded aircraft here that were standing on the ramp were later allowed to take off from the taxiway, which was left undemolished. So that is not that big of an issue. So yeah, that is the story of Chicago Meigs Airport. Let's now continue the flight testing. We are in the 767. Let's go ahead and fly. All right, 120 knots. This is looking good. There we go. That was a pretty nice landing. Let's go for a vertical takeoff. See, that's the 767 for you. That was obviously a pretty relaxed and nice takeoff. No worries at all. We almost did a tail strike here, but this worked out perfectly fine on that vertical takeoff. Jesus Christ. No problem, right? Uh, 777, let's try landing that plane here. Come on. Today's airplanes are uh, pretty strong when it comes to uh, short runway operation, I guess. This is quite a bigger plane now and a little bit more of a modern plane. What's the 777-200 long range around in 2003 as well? I don't know. Let's go ahead and land here. Okay, that was uh, an on-point landing again, just like in the 727. Let's see if we can stop. This is actually getting a little very close. Oh, very much close. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh no. All right, that was uh, not good. I guess. I mean, God damn it, we should have actually approached from the other side because that would have been funny, you know, overrunning into the water. Oh yeah, that was on point. Come on, that was perfect, right? I mean, it was not on the smooth side, but for a short landing like this, this is required, but uh, it was still not enough. <laughs> we totally overran the runway and uh, there's some people standing here. So yeah, what can we say about uh, Chicago Megs? It obviously is very sad that it's gone. Thank you, Richard. I mean, this uh, it used to be a pretty cool airport, but you know, pretty sad that it's not around anymore. So uh, yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video and I'll see you tomorrow as always. Good night. Thank you.